the defining issue facing our country right now. It's the size of government, the spending, the deficits, the debt that are literally having us on the road to financial ruin. And we see that across our country. We see it here in Washington especially. We look at this debt limit deal that was cut back in late January, like late July. And candidly, we were very disappointed in the Republican leadership in the House Amen. for cutting that deal. It was a bad deal. It was. And we look at what that debt deal has brought us. We see a congressional super committee. Have you been following this? I know you have, because you're dialed in. Six Democrats, six Republicans, they come up with a plan. And have you noticed all the hand wringing? Oh, we've got to cut 1.5 trillion. How do we do that? That's such an insurmountable number over 10 years. Oh, <laughs> by the way, at the current rate of spending over the next decade, they're bemoaning cutting a trillion five. Over the next decade, you know how much the government's slated to spend right now? Over $47 trillion. Now look, I'm a Virginia Tech liberal arts major. Full disclosure, my math isn't my strong suit. That's not much in the way of cutting and changing the size of government, is it? No. We've got to cut deeper and further, and not just for the sake of cutting, although that's important. We've got to do it for the sake of job creation and entrepreneurial growth and the ability to bring prosperity back to our country. That's what's at stake with this spending battle we're undertaking. So this Congressional Super Committee, by November 23rd, they're supposed to report out their proposal to cut the spending. And then here's the dangerous part. By December 23rd, the House and the Senate have to vote on this legislation. No amendments are allowed. No changes to the proposal from the Congressional Super Committee. No filibuster if it's a bad deal in the Senate. It's an up or down vote two days before Christmas. And here's the alarming part. I don't know if you saw this. You've been here, and thank you for being here over the last 40, 36 hours. But roughly 100 members of the House signed a letter to the Congressional Super Committee members saying that the cuts need to be balanced with revenue enhancements. Any idea what we think revenue enhancements means to these politicians? Tax increases, that's exactly right. And here's the alarming part, and here's the reason Americans for Prosperity is not about any one party. We're not for a third party, by the way, but we're not about any one party. We're a genuine movement organization. Dozens of Republican House members signed that letter. Okay? So we've got to stay vigilant. By Monday, we'll have these names posted on our website. Make sure you go to Twitter. in both parties have to be held accountable. And we're going to do it. And Monday, those names are going to be there. We'll also shoot you an email about it. We're going to be respectful and civil. <laughs> Unlike the left-wing nuts last night, we're going to be respectful and civil. But we are going to be insistent and we're going to be organizing about the business of our country in the coming weeks and months. All right? That's what we're going to do. just how bad this debt limit deal was, we decided to be proactive. So we hit the road with a Cut Spending Now tour. We started it in Shelton, Washington, a little lumber town about 30 miles south, maybe a little west of Seattle. We went to Washington State because that's the home of the Democrat co-chair of the Congressional Super Committee, Senator Patty Murray. We wanted to start in the home area of one of those chairs. And it was interesting and ironic that we picked Shelton, Washington. You see, Shelton, 25 years ago, was one of the big, booming towns in Washington State. The timber business was growing and providing good jobs. And then government regulators for the spotted owl, remember the spotted owl? Decided that those timber jobs were not nearly as important and so with federal regulation, without acts of Congress, but with unelected bureaucrats, they literally destroyed the economy, 
the business and the vitality of that town. Now it's slowly coming back, but if you want to see what government regulation and red tape can do in the real world, just look around you. We did in Shelton, Washington that day, and here's the great irony of that. The spotted owl that was so important to protect, after being protected now, is on the decline again. Because, shockingly, there's another owl out there, and apparently, it, I'm not kidding, apparently it's meaner, bigger, stronger, I guess Darwin got involved, I don't know. And it's killing and eating the spotted owl, alright? Now, and here's the beautiful part, now the environmental regulators, they're shooting this new owl. I'm not kidding, Phil Kerfoot talked about this. Uh, so, enough on spotted owls in Shelton, Washington. But we launched this cut spending now effort. We've taken it across the country. We've been in Ohio and Pennsylvania and Florida, Virginia, Maryland, across the country with this message to say to the Congressional Super Committee and to every member of Congress, look, when this commission or this Congressional Super Committee comes forward, if it includes one dollar of taxes or if it fails to genuinely genuinely cut government to change the trajectory that we're seeing now in government growth, you better vote it down. That's the message we have this country now. And so you're going to see that continuing in coming days and weeks. We have a big fight ahead of us, guys. Circle that date, November 23rd. That's when the proposal comes out. We've got to keep the pressure even now, though, on these members in preparation for that. Normally, November, December is a little slower time in the, in the public policy battles at the federal level. Not this year. This year, it's a big time because we can't afford to lose this effort. And so we're going to have those names posted, the 100 or so members who signed it, Democrat and Republican. We're going to ask you to urge them to change their ways. We're also going to ask you to talk to the leadership of both parties to tell them, don't you dare do this. Let's tell the speaker on the Republican side. Let's tell the Democrats as well. We've got to win this effort and cut spending. So that's what we're going to do.